The January 6th committee seems to have had tremendous success in getting people to cooperate with their investigation, including people like Donald Trump's son-in-law, Jared Kushner, who testified for over six hours, his daughter, Ivanka, who testified for eight hours, his own personal lawyer, Rudy Giuliani, who testified for nine hours. The committee has conducted over a thousand depositions and interviews, although there has been this tiny little portion of people who refuse to cooperate, and an even smaller group that has refused subpoenas. Now, two of them, Trump advisors Steve Bannon and Peter Navarro, have been criminally indicted by the Department of Justice. Two others, including Trump's chief of staff, Mark Meadows, have not. And then there's a group of Republican congressmen who have been subpoenaed and refused to cooperate, but no public action has been taken at this point. We don't not know their fate. Among them is Republican Congressman Mo Brooks of Alabama. Now, Brooks spoke to the crowd at the Ellipse on the morning of January 6th wearing body armor. Today is the day American patriots start taking down names and kicking ass. Now, our ancestors sacrificed their blood, their sweat, their tears, their fortunes, and sometimes their lives to give us, their descendants, an America that is the greatest nation in world history. So I have a question for you. Are you willing to do the same? Brooks was then and continues to be one of Donald Trump's most vocal, stalwart supporters in his quest to overturn the election. And he earned Trump's endorsement in his Senate primary. When his polling numbers started to plummet, Trump just loudly dumped him. Brooks is now trying very hard to get that endorsement back, promoting the Twitter hashtag reendorsemo. And Republican Congressman Mo Brooks of Alabama joins me now. Good to see you, Congressman. Um, how do you understand? Chris, it's always enjoyable to listen to the introduction. I'm glad, I'm glad that you, you enjoyed it. A, mo, a lot of it was, were your words. How do you understand this trajectory you've been on? Obviously, you are an enormously stalwart um, supporter of Donald Trump. You were there, uh, you know, trying to achieve his aims before January 6th and on that day. He endorsed you, and then he put out this statement where he said you went broke, that you've gone woke, uh, and that he made a horrible mistake in that, that you made a horrible mistake, and he just said that he rescinded his, his endorsement of you. How did that feel? Well, I was wondering if I might get a job with MSNBC. Y'all all know I'm woke, right? <laughs> uh, I, don't, I don't know if that's going to work. You seem a little caught betwixt and between if the president seems you're woke, and I don't think there's much work for you here, but you have to convince Republican primary voters. What, what do you think you could do to get back in his good graces? Well, what I try to do is I focus on public policy issues. That's what motivates me. Uh, that's why I encourage people to vote a certain way, one way or the other. Quite frankly, if, you know, we're a republic. We have different mindsets, different views. If you're a liberal, you don't want to vote for Mo Brooks. And all the liberals in the state of Alabama get that. I'm sure I won't get very many liberal votes when it comes to the general election. What I want in the Republican primary, though, is for people to understand that there's only one conservative in, that, in this race, and that conservative is Congressman Mo Brooks. And arguably, there's only one Republican in this race, and that Republican is Congressman Mo Brooks. So Can that's just... what I'm trying to communicate to the citizens of the state of Alabama. I'm just going to throw out the script here in the interview and just ask you this. Why are you, why are you on my show? You, you have a Republican primary to win. Uh, I, we don't have a lot of Republican primary Alabama votes. I don't think. If we do, I love you. I'm glad you're watching. Like, what, what, are, you tr what are you trying to do here? What do, you, what do you need to happen, Mo Brooks? Look, I don't avoid any particular shows that are live. Sometimes I'm a little bit hesitant about recorded ones because they cut and splice and take your words and take them out of context and all that kind of mm -hmm. stuff. But what I always try to do is help people understand that America is the greatest nation in world history. We have foundational principles that have enabled us as individuals to excel. And as we as individuals excel, our country excels. That's why we've been in the greatest nation in world history now for about 75 years from an economic standpoint, from a liberty standpoint, from our ability to control our own destiny standpoint, from our military prowess, national right security, you name it. And so, there are certain things that have made us who we are. It wasn't by accident. And I just want to do the best I can to defend and promote those values. And to the extent I can persuade people that we are the greatest nation in world history, and this is why, that they'll come on board. So I want to ask you about your, uh, your participation in the, the sort of that period after the election up to January 6th. Obviously, you were there at the Ellipse that day. Um, and, and you, you talked to the crowd. We, we played that crowd. Did you, when you saw 
the the footage, right? And I'm sure you've seen it of like the the police officer having the door squeezed on him, and the 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 flagpole beating them, and them getting pulled into the crowd, and you know getting whooped, or you might even say kicked their asses kicked. Was there some part of you that felt some twinge of oh no? I, I, did I have anything to do with that when I told people to go kick ass? Well, let me talk about it in three different senses. Okay, first, a Barack Obama federal court judge, in response to the Eric Swalwell lawsuit, no, not, has no, looked not, at no, all no. of the evidence I, and I, the law and has dismissed I, it. The case against me because there's not, no plausible argument. Wait, I just want to be clear. I just want to be clear. I inspiring the attack on the United be, States Capitol. I just want to be clear. I, I'm not. I'm not accusing That's you of anything. Judge who's looked at it all? No, no. A Barack Obama federal judge. I know, but I want to be clear about this because I really want to. I really want an answer to this. I, I, I really do. <laughs> I'm not accusing you of anything of legally or anything. I'm saying personally, at a human moral level, you are a human being. I'm no, a human being. You have a platform never and I have a platform. Because if, 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 if when you, you saw those images, you didn't think to yourself, when I told people to go kick ass and I talked about the blood of our forefathers, that that had something to do with people oh. taking up and beating up cops? Chris, let me speak, okay? Okay, it, go ahead. It, you guys in the news media, there's two sentences in one paragraph, no, and you, you take go, one you part go. of You're one right. sentence. Look you at go. the preceding sentence that tells you I'm talking about beating Republicans in the 2022 and 2024 election. That's whose names we're going to take down and whose derriers we're going to kick, okay? So anybody who was there who looks at the two sentences in a two-sentence paragraph knows what I'm talking about. It had nothing to do with what occurred at the United States Capitol. What do you I was talking think? about beating the rhinos. Right. I'm, a, I'm a conservative. We're fighting with the establishment wing of the Republican Party, the rhinos. That's what I was talking about. When, 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 Mo, um, when Mark Meadows texted you that morning, I, I just find this, again, another funny sort of a human text. Um, at 8.08, he, he texts you, you are speaking this a.m., and then are you aware and uh, did it in 10 minutes, thanks, crowd roaring, you wrote back. Like, had you... Had you sort of established with him that you were speaking? Was he worried you didn't know or you were sleeping in? Like, what was that about? I was asked last second to speak at this event. It, uh, I don't remember the days of the week, but I was asked on one day, and the speech was supposed to be the next morning. And I'm going, I'm working on all this election fraud and um, that was going on in the 2020 elections, all the speeches, all the different states that might be contested with a speech for each one, different issues with respect to each of those mm -hmm. states. And I get a call from the White House. Someone at the White House asked if I'd be willing to uh, give an address, a speech uh, at the Ellipse the very next day when I'm doing all this work. And I'm, I'm telling my staff at some point, look, this has got to be substantive. Initially, my understanding was I was going to have about 15 minutes, and I put together about a 15-minute speech. And then I find out about the time I get there sometime that morning that, no, it's been cut, which, you know, that puts a pretty big burden on a, on a speaker who's got maybe a 15-minute speech to reduce uh -huh. it to 10. And at one point, I was saying, well, look, I... I think they were offering me three, four, or five minutes when I had a 15-minute speech, and eventually we compromised on about 10, right. which means you have to restructure a lot of things on the fly. Look, so that's what look, that's all about with my, uh, look, excuse me, with Mark Meadows, where we're talking 10 minutes. I met his time constraints. Everything went fine, so, and I appreciated him at least upping it from when I arrived there, when it's supposed to be about three, four, or five minutes or whatever it was. How, you've been in public life for a while. I mean, you're a, you've been in elected office for a while, right? Before. Uh, before Donald Trump came on the scene, right? Have you have you talked to Jeff Sessions? Oh, oh yes. Yeah. Have you talked to Jeff Sessions at all? Because I'm I'm watching your career arc here, and it looks like a little like your fellow Alabama Republican Jeff Sessions. Jeff Sessions, obviously, senator from Alabama, an early Trump supporter, his most stalwart. He's elevated to AG. And then, because Donald Trump is who he is, Donald Trump doesn't like the fact that Jeff Sessions does what he thinks is his requirement of the law and trashes the guy, destroys him in a Republican primary, all of the whole time with Jeff Sessions desperately begging Donald Trump to endorse it. And his career ends with him in this sort of bizarre supplicant position to Donald Trump, who wants nothing to do with him. And I wonder if you've learned any lessons from that. Well, the last time I saw Jeff Sessions was probably about a year ago, and that's that. Um, as far as this race, I want to emphasize something. Donald Trump has not endorsed my opponent. And right. there are reasons why Donald Trump has not endorsed my opponent in the United States Senate race. It's incumbent upon me to help folks understand the reasoning why mm -hmm. 
Donald Trump has not endorsed my opponent. My opponent is a part of the establishment, a Mitch McConnell candidate, a special interest group candidate beholding to open borders and cheap foreign what? labor special interests. And those are big contrasts between myself what? and Katie Britt. And there are also probably some reasons, some of the reasons why Donald Trump uh, has declined to endorse Katie when Britt. He, Although you really, when, you're asking me to, you know, think inside of his mind. You really need to ask him those questions well, as to I, why he has done what he has done. I, I'm I not would in love a to. very good position to be able to mind read. Let me ask you this, this final question about something you said after he rescinded publicly that endorsement. And I want to play it for you because it got attention uh, uh, about him contacting you to rescind the election. Take a listen. The president has asked me to rescind the election. Of and 2020. You, that's you said that's, that's illegal. Uncus it's it, you can't do that. What did he ask you, and what did you tell him? Well, he he always brings up we've got to rescind the election. We got to take Joe Biden out and put me in now. He still says that. Yes, and I'm going, Mr. President. I'm giving him advice. I'm an attorney. I've read the law. I've read the Constitution. I know it. And I say, Mr. President, you can't do that. Now. You've seen from my previous block that I'm a straight shooter, and sometimes I'll say when I agree with someone, even if I don't agree with them on everything, I agree with Liz Cheney on some things. I agree with you, Mo Brooks, on the fact the Constitution does not allow you to rescind an election. Do you, are you worried that the, the president is, the former president is like not all there or, or mentally fit? Because that seems like a, a delusional thing to ask you. If I had been the victim of voter fraud and election theft activity, I would have wanted the same thing. Right. Whether you can do it is a different matter. That's for the law to decide. But I would have wanted the same thing. So I would have wanted to be reinstated. You think that's a I would reasonable have wanted thing. to rescind the election. I'd have wanted to do everything. Right. But as you and I know, under the Constitution, United States Code, the deadline is January the 6th. I right. wish it was longer, well, but it's not. But I would have wanted the same thing that President Trump wanted if I had had an election stolen from me. That's yes. what he believes. That's what I believe. Yes, that belief is wrong, unfortunately, uh, to great, great, great negative effects well, on our country. Well, you can say but that, Congress but if you want to spend a lot of time debating I, that subject, I'll take you on toe-to-toe. -to -toe. You name me. the time, you name the place, give us enough time to discuss There's, it. You go down your list of things, I'll go down my list of things. There, there are 150 is congressmen and senators truly nothing who respectfully in this world. disagree with your viewpoint. Truly nothing in this world I want less. Thank you very much, Congressman Roe Brooks. I appreciate it. <laughs> I can understand. <laughs> An honest answer.